Well, the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, is underway. We had President Trump speaking about the U.S. economy. Now he touted the strength of the American economy earlier today. Let's watch. Today I'm proud to declare that the United States is in the midst of an economic boom, the likes of which the world has never seen before. Despite all of the cynics, I had never been more confident in America's future. I knew we were on the verge of a profound economic resurgence. Joining us now, we have James Liu, Clearnomics founder and CEO. And James, we asked the previous guest what he thought about that. He was saying that he doesn't necessarily agree with the president in terms of the U.S. economy right now being in a state of booming, I guess, continuously saying that it's thriving right now. What do you think? We think the economy is very healthy right now. Mm -hmm. Things are going well. Obviously, unemployment is extremely low, and there really are no signs of inflation yet. Although I think what the president is talking about is really where we are in the business cycle, a cycle that has gone on for almost 12 years now. So you, know, you think about where we are, we are in a historic cycle. Things are generally going well. Obviously, we're not going to see the 3 or 4% growth rates that we saw in the 90s or in the 60s. But you know, 2% for US economic growth, if we can keep that steady, is actually quite good. James, what do you think matters most to the markets here in the short term in terms of performance? Yeah, so I mean, from a market perspective, we're going to have a make or break moment later this year around corporate earnings. Mm -hmm. Now, I think it's no secret to anyone uh, who looks at markets that earnings have to deliver in 2020 in a way they did not deliver in 2019. And just to be clear, that's not necessarily a bearish signal in and of itself. We've had situations like this uh, even over the last several years where markets ran above where earnings were likely to be. So we had this at the end of 2016, right around the presidential election, at the end of 2017 and 2018 valuations were elevated roughly where they are here. And so as long as global growth can pick up, which is an open question, but if it does pick up, then we can see global earnings pick up as well. And that, of course, can boost earnings and help stocks. James, what are your expectations for, for earnings? Do you think we will return to growth this year? Yeah, so we think we will, but unfortunately not as much as the market expects. Mm -hmm. So the market right now seems to still expect around 9% earnings growth over the course of 2020. And we think, unfortunately, it's going to be closer to 5 or 6%, which is around the historical average. Now, all that means in the end is that if you think stocks are roughly fairly priced today at around 18 times forward earnings, that just means it's actually just slightly more expensive than that because earnings may not deliver as much as the market expects. So overall, we think it's still a good picture. We think the economy is still healthy. And if global growth can pick up again, then that means that other international markets can actually do well too. So think back to 2017. Global growth was picking up. It wasn't just the US that did well that year, which it did. Emerging markets, developed markets also did very well. So we think staying internationally diversified is still the best approach. So you're saying the US economy, let's start there, is still very strong. You're not worried at all about the slowdown that we've seen in manufacturing? Yeah, so there are exceptions to what we've talked about. And manufacturing, you hit the nail on the head, is one of those. Mm -hmm. Manufacturing has slowed down. Now, part of that is because, of course, trade wars. And now we do have this interim trade agreement in place. Unfortunately, that's not going to solve all these problems. Manufacturing has slowed down. But if you look at non-manufacturing indices, They've slowed down because the economy is older and we're in the 12th year of this uh, expansion. But it certainly has not started to contract the way manufacturing has. What that tells me is that there's one part of the economy which makes up about 10% that has slowed down that was related to temporary measures around trade. And hopefully that'll pick back up. And the rest of the economy is still actually doing quite well. Obviously not gangbusters, again, going back to prior economic cycles, but it's still healthy uh, today. James, you mentioned trade. In terms of what we saw in the phase one trade deal, do you think that was enough to satisfy the markets at this point? Uh, unfortunately, probably not for the long run. So in the short run, it's great that we got a trade deal. Everyone's happy about that. You know, they, they did the whole ceremony, the you know, dog and pony show. They signed papers and everything was great. But tariffs are still in place. It's unlikely we get the second round trade deal anytime before the presidential presidential election, mm -hmm. which means we have this cloud hanging over us for the rest of this year. And in, in, in addition to that, a part of this trade deal, the crux of it is that China is supposed to buy a lot more agricultural products and other mm -hmm. goods. And it's unclear whether or not they'll actually be able to make that happen. So optically, good for the markets, removes some uh, instability that was there in the marketplace, but we still have a long way to go. James, we also had going off of that Treasury, uh, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin telling Wall Street Journal earlier that the phase two trade deal between U.S. and China may not actually remove all the existing tariffs. If these tariffs are not taken back, how significant do you think that is? Well, I think from a market perspective, markets will 
essentially learn to look past that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had these tariffs in place uh, for you know, well over a year. And we were talking about tariff escalation last year. And so if you think about what the market might do, I think the market will react just fine. From an economic perspective, obviously that reduces uh, economic trade and economic output. And so that ultimately will be the problem. All right, James Liu, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks, Shauna.